Today I need to unload the van because I came back a bit late yesterday so I've, uh, I didn't have time to do it uh, and I'll try to have a go at uh, repairing the table football um, it shouldn't be too difficult hopefully and Clément's gonna help me and I'm going to, <laughs> to try and finish the vlog this morning from yesterday and play with my monkey. Monkey So I let you get on with that then? Yes, please. Uh, so yesterday didn't go totally as planned. I was on my own with Clement uh, most of the day because Mark was in Lyon. And <laughs> it was all going fine until um, I needed to speak to Ignat very quickly and I left the Clement in the dining room and I just ran outside and as soon as I got outside I had this crash and I'd forgotten to close the door on the dining room and Clement had crawled out after me and grabbed a bottle of grenadine syrup you know that's sort of, um, that you dilute with water to drink uh, that was underneath a cupboard I don't know why it was there and it had fallen on the ground and smashed and all I could see was him sat in the middle of a massive pool of bright red liquid which was a tiny bit heart stopping um, luckily I was there instantly and he hadn't even touched the bottle it hadn't gone anywhere near him but he was sitting in a pile of red syrup which because the floor was on the her huh, gradually spreading down towards the parquet flooring of the dining room so I ran off with Clement dripping syrup everywhere all down me all over a basket of clean washing i just brought in through the kitchen to wash everything off to check he hadn't cut himself as the syrup was spreading inexorably towards the flooring oh gosh and it took so long and then of course i had to sit him somewhere which then got covered in syrup whilst i cleared up the other syrup and then I had to take him out of there and upstairs to the bathroom and while I ran the bath I had to put him on the floor so he then spread syrup all over the bathroom and then I realised it was on my shoes so it was a couple of hours getting red syrup out of everything and then so I sat down when Mark got home I was a tiny bit frazzled I sat down and um, started doing the editing and I was going really well and I'd done about two to three hours of it. I was like, yes, I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna be able to be in bed before midnight tonight. And then my computer crashed. Well, it was actually the Adobe that I use and it'd been saving, but for some reason, the crash meant that the auto saves didn't work and it lost everything right back to the start. And I didn't even swear. I just closed my laptop, closed the desk and went to bed because <laughs> I just couldn't face it anymore. <laughs> and I thought that this morning I will do it at a nice leisurely pace whilst Mark films himself doing some um, repairs and things like that because this is the reality of our day. You know, I spend quite a lot of it editing um, and looking after Clement. One of the little uh, bedside tables has um, a loose board that I'm just uh, going to glue back while it's uh, out and uh, I remember it. So, so I'm just going to, to sand the old glue a little bit. It's uh, just a, a quick little sanding.
be the most amazing job, but uh, they're not the most amazing tables either. So, so, well, uh, feel free to do it then. <laughs> not the only one. <laughs> Have a go at unloading the, the table football and try to see what's wrong with it. Footballs upside down. Um, as far as I can see, only the the bottom plank needs replacing. It was actually uh, not very high quality. Uh, not very high quality. So I'm, I think I'm gonna try to replace it with a plank of uh, solid wood. And we have plenty from our own trees. So I just need to disassemble it for now. So the first step is to remove all the staples. So I can uh, remove the plank. They go really easily actually.
so now I've removed the most of the plank underneath I can see a bit uh, more clearly so on this side there is the mechanism for where you insert a coin and it um, and it uh, releases the, the balls and on the other side it collects the balls when you score uh, so I don't, uh, it's all uh, glued uh, and so I don't really want to wreck everything so instead I'm going to cut around this part with a, a jigsaw and uh, I'll replace the, the board on the on either side and try to reinforce it So I'm going to replace everything. What are you eating? I'm eating a Malteser. I see. Mm. I see who the, the mouse was who was eating in the cupboard. Oh, I have a question, ma'am. What's your question? So I've opened the mm, the. Ooh. The table uh, tennis. No treasure inside. Which is not the table tennis. The table enough. football. Um, and I got. Uh, is there any money in it? No, sadly. But oh. that's the key, which is interesting. Um, so my dilemma yeah. is whether you want uh, to be able to put a coin to play uh, to play uh, football or not. Well, table soccer. It's called in the US. What do you think? I think it would be quite cool. Yeah, it's quite fun, isn't uh, it? But the only issue is that I can't really be bothered to repair it. <laughs> so what do you need to do to repair it? Uh, more work. <laughs> like what? No, I just have a few <laughs> more bits and pieces I need to glue and... Uh, and fix. I need a piece of metal, a metallic rod uh, to put there. The uh, yeah, on various things. Um, is it something you could do later if you changed your mind if you didn't do it? Yeah, I think so. Maybe that's it's the easiest then. We've yeah. got rather a lot to do at the moment, so. Okay, good. So it was my suggestion. So <laughs> your uh, your uh, your suggestion is very good. <laughs> I'm glad you suggested it. <laughs> what would you have said if I said no, I think you should do it? Uh, I would have said that you could do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why you asked for my opinion then. Well, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, trying to make you agree to my... <laughs> oh, look, I, 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 was, I out, wasn't right? really asking actually. <laughs> look, the wisteria is coming out already. Mm -hmm. much. <laughs>
bacon, leek, onion. Uh, courgette, courgette in it. The key thing is that you cook the vegetables before you put them in. We tend to sort of stuff our quiches full of vegetables because I think it's quite nice. I always give them a bit of an extra wash at this point because leeks, especially ones from our garden, tend to have a lot of um, mud hanging around in the middle of them. Now, a quick note about our kitchen. It's, uh, we essentially camp in the kitchen because sometime in the 1980s, they thought it was a really clever idea to get rid of the main kitchen and put everything in a cupboard on the side. And so the kitchen of this enormous chateau is about the size of a small store cupboard <laughs> and we just couldn't handle it so we got a second hand range cooker put it in the main room that used to be the kitchen and we brought in sort of a table here but it's all a bit awkward because you have to go through to the store cupboard kitchen to use the sink and the oven and things and we have these fantastic plans for what we're going to do for the new kitchen but they're just uh, we've got another two buildings to do before we can get onto this so it's a bit annoying I've washed all my leeks and I'm gonna take off a nice big chunk of butter and put it on the stove into the frying pan I think it's good to have a nice thick cast iron type or thick bottom pan to cook anything in butter because it stops it burning and just means you can nicely slowly cook it. Again, quantity, you just start to get used to it by eye. For us, we have such vastly different sizes in eggs. There's no point in saying, oh, it takes X number of eggs. I just put in quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, if I'm talking about, ours are probably mostly quite small. I would put at least 10 in a quiche. Ours are really, really yellow because we give them quite a bit of maize. Mark reminded me that it's a good idea to put a lid on the um, leeks because it sort of steams them. Now with the eggs, I do beat them but not so they're really, really frothy. It's just to get a little bit of air in and to mix up the yolks and the whites. There you go. Now the key to why having a quiche, making a quiche in France is so easy is pre-made, pre-rolled pastry. It's not hard to make your own pastry, but when you're in a hurry, it's lovely to be able to just whip one of these out of the freezer, uh, wait for it to defrost and unroll it and it's already made. Um, there are two types of pastry that you can use for a quiche that you can buy in France. You've got pat brise and pat foyette. Pat foyette is um, oh, puff pastry, essentially, uh, but it's quite a thin one. And pat brise is short crust pastry, uh, which is more traditional for making a quiche, as you can see in their beautiful little illustration. But I actually prefer this particular brand of pet foyette because it's really buttery and lovely. Um, another cheating thing we do is um, we don't pre-bake them. I always find they shrink and it's faffy and it's just a bit pointless. Um, I don't mind the old soggy bottom, but even then it doesn't tend to happen. If you put the oven at a decent temperature at the beginning, 
190, 200, it just cooks, it's fine. Another extremely important thing for making a quick and easy quiche is a quiche uh, mould. And this one I think came from Mark's mum actually. Um, and you can detach the base and the sides. Which is what the other day a lot of you were commenting that you thought his quiche had been made without a mould and it hadn't. It was made with this but I think to crisp up the edges whilst Mark was waiting he took the outside off. Right, whilst the leeks are still doing, here's one of the secret weapons. It's milk. It keeps it nice and loose instead of becoming a big solid mass. So I put a good old slosh of milk, I don't know, a glass of milk in there and mix it in. So it's really, really liquid. And some pepper. I always put too much in. <laughs> and some salt and I think it's nice to have a bit of uh, some herbs in. We have herbs de Provence, it's a standard sort of mix of herbs here. It's quite hard to film yourself cooking. I bet Nigella doesn't have this problem. Mix it all in. Back over with the leeks. Don't overcook them, and you don't want them caramelised. And just as they're cooking, kind of mush up the little uh, round bits so that they all disintegrate, not disintegrate, but they separate out a bit. And when they're nice and soft but still green, they are done! Now I started to, I forgot to defrost my pastry before lunch, as always, which means a combination of putting it to, to try and warm a little bit in the oven, which I've slightly cooked that side, and when you unroll it, it gets all a bit um, cracked. But honestly, it just doesn't matter. You don't notice once it's cooked. Um, and when you unroll it, it's on parchment. It's on um, baking paper already, and I just take the extra bit off the edge. And that's really what holds in any leaky edge. The pastry is more for the taste than anything, I find. There's so many different ways you can add it. Mark and I tend to add a little bit of egg first, just to coat the bottom. Watching for my holes. And then put the veg in. Now that's a lot of leeks. I think I might have overdone it on the leeks this time. <laughs> this is gonna be one mega full quiche. Wow, look at that. Mine always overflow, but I get them in the oven quick and then they, uh, the egg hardens somewhere, how or another. And here's some cheese. Any kind of cheese, whatever you've got, you need using up. Um, again, I, I don't know how long it takes. It tends to take a different amount of time each time, uh, but about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. I usually set an alarm for uh, a timer for 20 minutes and see if it's done and I'll show you what it looks like at that point.
that's about done. In fact, maybe slightly overdone. <laughs> I got distracted. Um, usually I just sort of tap on it and if it's, it's a bit, that's a bit hard, a bit rubbery, but um, you can catch it a bit before that. Um, but it'll still be nice. And here we are. I've popped it onto a beautiful chopping board made by Mark's brother. Let's show you that underneath. And uh, all ready to eat. Last year in the autumn, I bought a lot of uh, bird, bird nests. Uh, I didn't hang them at the time because it wasn't the nesting season. But uh, now all the birds are uh, are looking for places to nest, so it's uh, it's time to hang them. So I'm going to scatter them everywhere where there's space, and uh, hopefully the the birds will uh, will adopt them uh, to to build their nests. Um, what I really like about these uh, these bird houses is that the um, you have uh, two screws here that can be removed, and depending on uh, the configuration, you're helping me <laughs> of the bird house. Do you want me to? You turn. Depending on the configuration of the birdhouse, you can uh, get different species to build their nest in them. So if you put, if you leave this plank with the hole like this, it's uh, it tends to attract tits. Whereas if you leave it open like this, you get uh, other types of birds like red tails or blackbirds that uh, like a more open place to build their nest. So I'm going to do uh, to hang a bit of both and hopefully we'll have different types of birds nesting in these boxes. They, we don't want them to be uh, to be too low so they don't uh, get taken by predators. They can't be near a branch or uh, something like that either uh, for the same reason. And some different different types of birds like their nests at different heights. So um, I'll hang them at uh, around two meters high for, uh, for uh, tits and uh, maybe even a bit higher for red tails. Do you agree? <laughs> okay, so let's do that. Alors, this is it. Oh, do you? Wedge tits all, all, all spring. I'm not rising to it. <laughs> <laughs> 